Good morning, Cedar Lane, and welcome to Music and Message. I'm Richard Richter, pastor of Cedar Lane, and I'm so glad that you joined us for this time of worship and praise and hearing God's word as we experience and celebrate this second Sunday in Lent. Let's worship together. As I begin our prayer today, I'm going to do so with the words of St. Anselm, who wrote these words a thousand years ago, and yet they still are vivid enough and real enough for us to live in today. Let's pray together. Jesus, as a mother, you gather your people to you. 
You are gentle with us as a mother with her children. Often you weep over our sins and our pride. Tenderly you draw us from hatred and judgment. You comfort us in sorrow and bind up our wounds. In sickness you nurse us, and with pure milk you feed us. Jesus, by your dying we are born to new life. By your anguish and labor we come forth in joy. Despair turns to hope through your sweet goodness. Through your gentleness we find comfort in fear. Your warmth gives life to the dead. Your touch makes sinners righteous. Lord Jesus, in your mercy, heal us. In your love and tenderness, remake us. In your compassion, bring grace and forgiveness. For the beauty of heaven, may your love prepare us. God, as we pray today, we thank you for the words of St. Anselm. Those words ring true from our hearts today. We pray for your gentle mercy to fall upon us. We pray that not only would you gather us, but please gather the people of Ukraine under your protective love. Gather and bring healing to those we hold in our hearts and speak their names before you right now. Now, Lord, help us to live as those gathered and strengthened by your overwhelming love for us. As we continue our Lenten journey, help us to fully open ourselves to your sacrificial love. And as we pray the prayer Jesus taught us, may its words live in our hearts and lives. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Before I read the scripture today, I want to go back and think about the words of St. Anselm that began our prayer. As he said, Jesus, as a mother, you gather your people to you. You are gentle with us as a mother with her children. Often you weep over our sins and our pride. Tenderly you draw us from hatred and judgment. You comfort us in sorrow and bind up our wounds. In sickness you nurse us and with pure milk you feed us. Jesus, by your dying we are born to new life. By your anguish and labor we come forth in joy. Despair turns to hope through your sweetness, your sweet goodness. Through your gentleness we find comfort in fear. Your warmth gives life to the dead. Your touch makes sinners righteous. Lord Jesus, in your mercy, heal us. In your love and tenderness, remake us. In your compassion, bring grace and forgiveness. In the beauty of heaven, may your love prepare us. I love those words because those words from a thousand years ago can be spoken from our hearts today. And I say that because somehow in our minds, we think that that old time religion is a harsh kind of judgmental kind of, of, of witness. And the truth of the matter is St. Anselm lived back in the 10 hundreds and he in his prayer tells us about gentleness and mercy, about warmth, about healing, about all the things that, that we long to hear today. And sometimes people that think they're preaching that old time religion preach at us and, and, and injure us instead of saying, whoa, Let's wait up a minute. Today, I want you to hear the words from Luke as we celebrate the 13th chapter. And I'm going to do the 31st through the 35th verses, but I'm going to, I'm going to point out when we get to the verses that, that this prayer comes from. Let's hear them. At that time, some Pharisees came to, at Jesus and said to him, leave this place and go somewhere else. Herod wants to kill you. He replied, Go tell that fox, I will keep on driving out demons and healing people today and tomorrow, and on the third day I'll reach my goal. In any case, I must press on today and tomorrow and the next day, for surely no prophet can die outside Jerusalem. Now here's the part. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who kill the prophets and stone those sent to you, how often I've longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, and you are not willing. Look, your house is left to you desolate. I tell you, you will not see me again until you say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Sometimes we look at the way faith is portrayed and it almost is portrayed in a way where we have to just say, I messed up. That's, that's the whole thing. I'm a sinner. And I want to start this off with just saying this. I'm a sinner and you're a sinner. We've all done things. We have all messed up. We have all, in fact, I don't even have to define what messed up is because you know what messed up is because we all know what it is to mess up. But we also need to hear that Jerusalem was messing up. And even as Jerusalem messed up and even as these people had been led astray by the Pharisees and those who, who taught them about that old time religion that was all about, you know, being sinful and being right with God and all those things that you've had shouted at you before, if you've ever been in some of those churches. And Jesus said, I want to take your children under, like a hen takes her chicks under her wings. And, you know, sometimes we let the gospel become so kind of one dimensional. We don't think about the metaphors and the other ways that Jesus spoke that, that open the scripture up to something that is amazing. I mean, I think about a big hug and I think about uh, how a, a mother hen hugs her chicks into her so that they are safe and so that they feel and know that they're protected. And that's exactly what Jesus was telling the people, the Pharisees about Jerusalem, that he looked at Jerusalem. And that's part of the reason he wept over Jerusalem was because he saw that they were so messed up, but he so much wanted to tuck them in. And I think that goes for us today. I think that today we need to know that God is not interested in striking us dead or striking us down or putting us in hell or all those things that, that people have shouted and screamed at us through the years. That Jesus looks at us and wants to, 
wants to snug us in to give us strength, to give us peace, to give us healing, to give us security, to give us the knowledge that we are God's. If you want to look at it this way, as we prepare for Lent, Jesus talks about his purpose in this. He talks about how he's going to prophesy and heal. And on the third day, he's going to achieve his goal. And we know what his goal is. His goal is to redeem us. He knows what his goal is to redeem us. And even seeing people that don't want to be snugged in, Jesus still wants to redeem them because that's what he was here for. And so in that knowledge, we celebrate in the middle of Lent a time where if we're not careful, we can really get down on ourselves because it is about self-evaluation. It is about going deep to love God more. But sometimes we get so wrapped up in us, the sinners, that we forget that it's not about us, the sinners, that way. It's not about the, the, our sins and everything. It's about the love of God that sent Jesus Christ here to love us. To snug us in like a mother hen snugs in her chicks. To protect them. To love them. To nurture them. To allow them to know that they're not alone. To allow them to know that they belong to her. That's exactly what Jesus wants us to know today. That's what he wants you to know. That's what he wants me to know. And sometimes we get in kind of this formulaic how we're going to lay it out and tell that. But I want to tell you this today. If you don't know anything else, I want you to know that Jesus Christ loves you. And he wants to snug you in. And that means, you know, I, I, I use the word hug because I like to be hugged. I know there are people that don't like to be hugged. That's a different thing altogether here. It's not about people that don't like to be hugged. It's about God's love that encircles us, embraces us, and holds us tight. It doesn't, it doesn't mean that you have to be hugged by people, because I know there are people that just don't. This week, we are taking away uh, a bunch of the, uh, the tape on the pews, and we are making masks welcome, but not required. And as we do that, we have a section that's going to have tape up and people can wear their masks too. And I have family members that I said, you know what? They would stay there all the time because they don't like to be hugged. They don't like, they don't like to be near people. They don't like people in their space. And if they could do it, they would put a force field around themselves all the time. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just the way that we are. I'm an extrovert. I love to hug. I love all that. But I but tell you what, I've, I've hugged people before and realized later, you know what? The last thing they needed from me was a hug because that's not the way to express my, my care and concern for them. I can do it in another way. And I've found ways through the years to do that. And God finds even better ways than, than I know to do that because God knows, he knows each one of our hearts. He knows where we are. And sometimes when you want to get down on yourself and say, I messed up or I'm a sinner or I'm, I'm unredeemable, just remember that Jesus Christ continues to reach out to redeem you. And there's nothing about you that God can't redeem or doesn't want to redeem or doesn't want to bring you under his wings. With that said, let's pray together. God, thank you so much for your love, for your strength. Thank you for the image of the hen with her wings bringing her chicks under her. We just pray, God, that for every person that feels disassociated, every person that feels alone, that they would feel your gentle nudge, that they would feel and know that you have them, that you bring them into you. And we pray that for ourselves and for each other. In Jesus' name, amen.
As you go back out to face the world again, I hope you go out knowing that you have a God that loves you, a God that wants to wrap his arms around you like a mother hen wraps her wings around her chicks to protect them. And may that knowledge give you strength. Lord God, go now with my brothers and sisters. Watch over and keep them. May your light shine upon them. and May they know your peace in every moment of this week ahead. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a great week.